Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Ms. Natural Neri here. And if you are new, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Today, I'm gonna be doing a makeup video. I literally haven't done a makeup video in about a year, which is sad. <laughs> But I have some time today to do it. I've also been getting quite a few requests to do a makeup tutorial. So we're going to do it today. So today we're going to be doing a natural glam, which is generally the look that I go for whenever I do my makeup. So I'm going to show you guys how I do it. Now to start, if you are a beginner, I'm going to try to make this as beginner friendly as possible. You always want to start with primer. And my primer of choice is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. So many people swear by this primer and I do too, y'all. It's so good. I feel like it really creates a natural flawless finish. So I'm going to start by prepping my skin with this primer. This is a really good base that really helps to hydrate the skin. And it also does what it says. It grips your foundation to your base, which is the primer. And that's going to create a really nice seamless look. And what I love about this primer is that it has skincare ingredients in it. It has hyaluronic acid as well as aloe, which is very good for your skin. So it's going to hydrate your skin. And I feel like with this product, I can wear it in isolation. I don't necessarily have to do it when I'm doing a full glam or a makeup look. I can wear this by itself. And it creates such a glassy skin look. And I just love that. After I apply the primer, I literally feel like my skin just wakes up. It looks so glassy, so radiant, and has a really nice glow. And I will literally leave the house just like this. So after you apply this, you want to let it dry down for about a minute. So I'm just going to fan it. And then once this dries down, you can begin applying your foundation. While I'm letting this dry, I'm going to tell you a bit about the foundation I'm going to use. I like using the NARS Radiant Longwear Foundation. I'm using the color Manassas. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. I used to use Mako, but that was way too light. Now, this shade is more of an orangey, warm tone, and I really like that. I feel like it makes my skin look more rich. Now, when I originally apply it, you're going to notice that it is slightly darker than my skin, just slightly. And I believe it's because we've gone through the winter months, but like in the summertime, this is the perfect shade for my skin. And I still believe right now it is. Once I actually apply it and apply my concealer here, you're going to notice that everything blends perfectly. So you all bear with me. It might not look like everything is seamless or the perfect shade right away, but trust the process. It's going to come together. I promise. Okay, so my primer has now dried down. You should be able to touch it and kind of tell that your skin is a bit sticky. That's when you know it's ready. What I like about this foundation is that it comes with a pump, making it easy to apply and it eliminates the mess that generally comes with a lot of the foundations where you can either pour it on or you can use a brush, but I feel like too much foundation in my brush, I'm not really a fan of that. I feel like that causes the brush to get so dirty and overly saturated with the product. This method, I feel like it just causes it to dispense really nicely and I can kind of manage how much comes out or that's being applied to my face. So now I'm going to use this brush and this brush is dirty. I need to actually clean my brushes. One major key to getting a flawless application is not only healthy skin and all that, but also clean brushes. You will notice a difference when you're applying your makeup, if your brushes are dirty or not. If they're dirty, it's not going to look as good. I feel like my makeup just looks so much better when I use clean brushes. So after this video, definitely cleaning my brushes. I literally don't have one clean brush to use, which is sad. Maybe I'll find one in another room. Give me a second. Hold on. All right. I found a clean brush. It's not an actual foundation brush. This is a Real Techniques blush brush which I'm going to be using it for foundation because it's the only clean brush that I have. And I feel like the other brushes that I have, putting those on my skin have also caused me a bit of breakouts. I'm also starting my period. You all know how that works. Whenever you're on your cycle, you get these little breakouts. So if you notice a little breakout on my skin, that's the reason. And also using dirty brushes consistently. So I need to clean my brushes. If you are a beginner and you're looking for brushes, I'll try to link some down in the description box. Real Techniques, that's the first brand of brushes that I purchased and I still use them to this day. I think I started 
makeup around like 2014, almost 10 years ago. And I've been using Real Techniques since I started. Also, Amazon has some really great brushes. They come in like a set of like, is it 12? And they have a really nice variety. And those brushes, they're affordable and they're really good quality. They're actually from this set. This is a buffing brush, but I use this to apply my makeup. Or is this Real Techniques? No, this is the Real Technique brush. But these are the ones from Amazon. It comes in a really nice set. I'll link both down in the description box. These are affordable and they're so good. I'm going to try to make this tutorial as detailed as possible. So this might be a long one, but I hope it's helpful. So as you can see, I feel like this color at one point, like perfect shade for my complexion. But as you can see, the neck is just slightly lighter, but that's not going to be a problem. Once I apply my concealer, everything is going to look so perfect. All right, so the concealer that I use is LA Girl Pro Concealer. This is in shade Toffee. This is a really affordable drugstore brand. You can also find this on Amazon. I usually get it in a pack of three. I believe these are about, I know they're under $10 for all three. So you don't necessarily have to get the most expensive concealers. I've been using this for a long time. This was one of those concealers that a lot of people used to rave about. But then over time, they moved to all these expensive brands which you don't necessarily have to use. I mean, NARS is one of those pricier brands, but this is one of those foundations that I'll probably be using for the rest of my life because I just love it. It works so well and it's long wear like it actually says. So I'm gonna continue using that. I have bought other foundations that I wanna test, but if you're looking for a very good foundation, that's the one. And then also a concealer that's affordable and works very well. I definitely recommend LA Girl Pro Concealer. It's the best. And the price point is also really good. So you can't beat that. So when I apply my concealer, I like to apply it in my T-zone area. So in this area here, right under my eyes, along the bridge of my nose, I like to apply it just above my lip to highlight that area and to bring some more color back in. I also like to apply it on my chin. And these are all the areas where the light naturally hits. I'm also going to apply it to my forehead. Now I have a large forehead, so I'm only going to start it here. Now, after you apply your concealer, some people like to let it dry down. I believe influencers like Jackie Anna and others have raved about this technique. You can let it dry down and then begin blending it out. But with this concealer, I feel like it lasts a good amount of time. And you don't actually have to worry about that wait time of it drying down. It blends out so nicely. And I feel like it's full coverage. I mean, look at the coverage on that concealer. And this comes in a number of different shades. I use color Toffee as I shared earlier. I use that color currently, but I used to use color Fawn, which was slightly lighter. So if you're the same complexion as me and you're looking for a good shade, Toffee and or Fawn would be good for you. So I'm just blending this out and I'm using a damp beauty sponge. Someone asked me the question the other day, if it's necessary to actually wet your beauty sponge, you will see a major difference when you don't wet it. I feel like your makeup doesn't turn out as good and it doesn't blend out as well if your beauty sponge isn't damp. You don't have to overly saturate it, but make sure it's damp. I'm just gonna blend all of this out and then I'm gonna add setting powder. And as I'm sure you all have noticed from many of my makeup videos, I do not do my eyebrows first. I do those later on in the process. I choose to do them last because I feel like when I'm blending out my concealer or even applying my foundation, that generally transfers on my brows and causes them to mess up if I've actually filled them in with a pencil. And I don't want to have to worry about them being messed up, like how defined they are or even just the pencil that I use. I don't want that to start to spread and just look crazy. So I opt to do my brow as one of the last steps. Okay, now that we blended that out, you see how now my skin actually matches my neck. Looks much better, we're coming together. Trust the process, I told you guys, the brows, once the brows are done, I feel like that makes everything look like it's supposed to be and that it's actually more seamless. But right now, 
we look a little interesting. Right, so now I'm going to add some more color back to my face. And I like to do that by contouring. And I'm also going to sculpt the cheeks some more. We have lost some weight, but I always like to just give my face a bit more snatch. So I'm going to be using this contour stick. This is by, it's actually a foundation stick. This is by Black Radiance. You can use a contour stick, but this is one that I found that works really well and it serves the same purpose. This is in color espresso and I'm going to use it along my cheekbone right here. And then I like to apply some in this area just above my cheeks, also on my forehead. Trying to create an illusion that it's not as large as it is. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, along the side of my nose, and also on my chin. You can really sculpt your face and cause it to look however you want. <laughs> so even if you're in the process of losing weight, contour is really going to help you. Sometimes I like to do it along my jawline. I'm going to do that today just to show you guys. And then I'm going to blend it out with this Real Techniques brush. And I like to use a circular motion when I do this. Contouring is one of my favorite steps. I feel like it helps to bring more color back into your skin. It really helps my face to kind of take shape and just look so much more sculpted. Contouring just really brings everything together, makes you look more alive, gives more color to the face, more depth. Looks great. I know some of you all are probably thinking there are a lot of steps to doing your makeup, and there are. And if you want your makeup to look flawless, don't think you're going to be able to do the bare minimum and get this flawless airbrush look. You have to put a bit more work in. So the next step is going to be setting powder now if you're a beginner like i was several years ago when i first moved to texas and i wasn't wearing makeup at all i generally would just wear lipstick maybe maybe some lip gloss do a brow and head out of the door now the first time i tried makeup y'all i did not use setting powder and when i tell you within an hour my makeup looked ridiculous <laughs> ridiculous you want to set all the areas where you place your concealer and that's going to cause your makeup to last longer and that's what we want the base which is a primer is going to help with that but also the setting powder that's important you have to sit after you apply your concealer sit now the setting powder that i'm going to be using is laura mercier and this is the translucent powder i also like to use the black opal true color powder so i like to use both of these the Laura Mercier, which you can find on Sephora, a bit more pricey. But the Black Opal setting powder, this is a finishing powder, same thing. This is more affordable. So if you just want to use this in isolation and you don't desire to spend all the extra money for this one, then just use this one. I'll link both of them. But this is a really good option. I used to use this in isolation all the time, but I found that using both, I don't know, it just brings my makeup together so well and causes it to last so much longer. I will offer safer foundation. If you're looking for a drugstore brand, CoverGirl True Match is really good. That's the brand that I used to use before I started trying NARS. And I love that brand. It's affordable and it's really good. So I'll try to remember to link some affordable options and the ones that I actually use. So I'm gonna make sure it's also budget friendly for you all as well. So I'm just applying this in all the areas where I apply my concealer. This is also going to help to reduce the oils in your face. So if you find that you have oily skin and it's constantly in that T-zone, that T-zone is where many of us get really oily, setting powder is going to help. Some people also like to spray finishing powder midway their process. I don't do that. What did I say? Finishing powder? I meant uh, setting spray. They like to spray setting spray mid-application they also do it at the end i don't apply any setting spray because i feel like i have a combination of oily skin and whenever i've used setting spray i feel like it makes my skin look much more oily and i don't like that so i just opt out of that step i don't even i don't even do that anymore but if it's beneficial to you especially if you have dry skin then maybe setting spray would be good for you 
So do what works for you. Test it out on your skin. I've seen that Makeup Forever has a really, really good setting spray. I don't know the type of skin that that influencer had that talked about it, but I was so tempted to get the setting spray and I purchased so many and I spent a lot of money on setting sprays. All the ones that everybody raves about. And my skin just doesn't like it. So you really have to figure out what's best for your skin. Also baking, I know many people rave about that. So baking is where you apply a generous amount of your setting powder and you just let it sit for a while. For me, it makes my makeup look a bit ashy. So I don't do that either. See what could work for your skin. It's kind of trial and error. And then go from there. So now I'm applying the black opal and this is in color neutral. I'm applying this over the Laura Mercier. See how good that looks? I like doing both. Now we're going to, I know we already contoured, but you want to add powder on top of that. And this is going to help to set it. This is the True Complexion Contour Palette. This is by Black Radiance as well. Now you're gonna notice that my palettes look really interesting. You're gonna tell that I've been using my stuff. <laughs> Everything just looks so dirty. I need to have somebody just come and like clean all of this stuff. After I do my makeup, sometimes y'all, my makeup desk or the desk that I use to do my makeup just looks crazy. <laughs> so like, look at this, a mess. My palettes are not clean. And that's why I'm also a bit apprehensive about doing these type videos. And I'm like, mine are not like all the other girlies that have all of these nice, clean palettes that look like they just purchased them. Mine don't look like that. They look like they've been used. They look crazy. You can't even read the text on them. They look so bad. So in this palette, it comes with three different colors. You get a highlight, you get a sculpt, and a contour. I like to apply the contour to my cheekbones. And then I'm going to go in... Why did I say that? I'm going to apply the sculpt to the area that I used to sculpt out my cheekbones using that foundation stick earlier. So I'm going to apply that on the top as like a powder that's going to add a bit more color and just cause the foundation or the cream product that I used to set. I'm going to set it with this powder. But you could just use this particular product without the cream. I just like using both. So I'm going to apply it in this area and then the contour color, which is a darker color. That's really going to help to make your, your cheekbones just look a bit more lifted. But don't apply too much because this is quite dark. You don't want to look like we have facial hair. You know how people have those long sideburns? You create that look and we don't want that. See how that makes my face look snatched? Okay, I'm also going to add a little bit to my nose just to set. Okay, this is what we're working with. Okay, now we're going to start adding blush. And people have been using cream blush lately. Like, that's been the, the trend. I've tried cream blush, and I've actually purchased some new ones from Rare Beauty. Rare Beauty. Sounds like I said the other word. That's not what I meant. <laughs> Talking too fast. I purchased some new ones from Rare Beauty and I really want to try them but not in today's video. I like applying a cream blush before applying my powder but I've already applied powder. So I'm going to go with my powder blush by Juvia's Place. They have these. Let me clean this off. Juvia's Place has these blush duo palettes that are so good. Can you all see that? I hope you can see it okay. This is what it looks like. I like this palette with these two colors. I'm more of a rougey, apple red type color blush girl. I have been toying around with like an orange or coral color, but I just always gravitate towards more of a reddish blush color. So I like to mix both of these colors and I feel like they look so good on my cheekbones. So I like to kind of smile, apply it to the apples of my cheeks and then apply it along my cheekbone. So you're gonna start on those apples. See how beautiful that color is? Okay, then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. 
mix both colors and don't be alarmed by this being too much blush or it looking like it's a bit much right now I'm gonna tone it down in a minute but lately I've been like the more blush the better <laughs> and then I like to apply just a little bit to my chin my nose the rounded part of my forehead and you can blend it out using the beauty sponge this one is by beauty blender this one is my favorite you can also blend out the blush like at the top but I'm not gonna do that using the sponge I'm gonna add some highlighter to the top and that helps to kind of tone it down a little bit and make everything more seamless okay so the highlighter that I'm gonna use is by Tarte it's their champagne glow I feel like I have to clean everything off because I've just been dropping stuff everywhere and I was in a rush earlier and that really messed me up so I was trying to prepare for a meeting I actually had to be on camera today so I feel like everything is all over the place but this is what is it in focus focus there we go this is what it looks like it's such a beautiful color if you're somebody who's looking for a glow listen you do not have to be pregnant y'all ask me all the time because y'all see me with this beautiful glow is this product I'm not pregnant yet look at that what it wakes those cheeks right on up do it to the other side so I like to start it on the balls of my cheek or the rounds of my cheek and then we're gonna carry that back on top of where we apply the the blush I have a hard time saying that over where we applied the blush you're gonna carry that back and just keep blending that out also on the bridge of the nose you know we want to shine bright like a diamond and then also I know I have a big forehead and I probably should not be applying it to my forehead but I'm gonna do it there anyway somebody literally made a negative comment about my forehead on Instagram just the other day and I'm like I have a big forehead great that's what God gave me I love it I'm not concerned about how large my forehead is I actually think my forehead is beautiful these comments generally come from people who aren't happy with themselves but we're gonna apply it to forehead make it shine even more oh I just love but it's, it's definitely not a bad thing to have a big forehead I love it and then you can also apply some to the top of your lip if you desire to okay now the next step this is where I like to start working on my brows after I've done my foundation concealer blush and added my highlighter then I start brows now for brows I'm gonna actually apply some powder to my brows first because they do look a bit oily and this is a good way to reduce those oils just adding some powder you can also apply an eyebrow or eyelid primer but I don't do that I feel like an added step that's gonna cost more money and I've already spent enough on makeup products so I don't need that as well so I'm just taking the Laura Mercier powder and I'm applying that to my eyelids as well as to my brows and then I'm gonna start applying my brow product I like using the NYX micro brow precision liner do I have it turned the right way there we go yes Hey, this is the right way I like that it has a spoolie as well as the black pencil point which this one <laughs> there's no more in here I need a different one so this one has a little black pen that you can use so now you can see it so you have the spoolie on one end and then you have your black pencil point or gel pen that you can use to do your brows I also like to use this elf liner this one says that it's satin I need to find one that's matte because I believe in the past I used to use a matte liner this one still works well but I feel like this one the finish is a little different and I like for my brows to look more matte than satin but this works in the meantime so I'm gonna use this one first and I like to kind of do sort of an ombre or gradient effect with my brows I always have to look in the mirror when I do my brows so let me just come in a little closer so you all can see what I'm doing but I'm gonna be looking in the mirror to see what I'm doing but I start with the elf pencil first and this is in black so I'm gonna start 
probably about the midway point to the end using the e.l.f. black pencil. And then for the start of my brows, I'm going to use the Precision Brow Pencil by NYX. I feel like this one is a bit lighter and also it has more of a narrow point. So it's going to give me more of a thinner stroke when I'm actually applying and I can make them look more natural with that one. So we're going to start. Then I'm going to use a spoolie to blend that product out. I feel like going over it with the spoolie makes it look more hair-like. And then now that I've done that, I'm going to go in with my micro brow pencil. And I'm going to make light strokes just to fill it in. So I'm going to make hair-like strokes to fill in the start. And that's going to make it look more natural. I like my brows to have more of a square shape. So I'm just trying to create that shape using this pencil. And because I use two different pencils, as you can tell, it starts off lighter and then it gradually gets darker. That makes it look more natural. Okay. This is what the brows are looking like. I'm just gonna use my spoolie to blend out the product. And now I'm gonna use my concealer and I'm gonna go under my brows as well as on top just to make everything look more refined. And you wanna to try to do this with an angled brush. Maybe y'all can see that. Oh, and I'm using the LA Girl Pro Concealer in Toffee to do this. See the difference for the one that has been cleaned up versus the one that hasn't? It looks so much better. Okay, now that the brows are done, we're going to begin to add some eyeshadow. I'm going to be using this Warrior palette. I'm going to use the shade Shamaha. I guess I'm pronouncing that right. I like to use that reddish shade and also the deepest shade in the palette. This one, I'm going to use that on my eyelids. So this shade, I'm going to use in this area. This is kind of my transition color. And you're gonna notice it's not perfect, but I feel like your makeup doesn't have to be perfect when you're applying your eyeshadow. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this reddish color and then I'm gonna add this deep color along my eyelids. This has been my go-to look lately. I feel like it adds more depth to my eyes and makes my eye color pop a little more. And you could carry this under the eyes and create sort of a smoky look, but now I'm nervous to do under eye eyeshadow or liner. I used to do it in the past, but I feel like it just looked overdone and made me look older. And I don't really care for that. Just kind of aged me. I feel like now that I don't do any liner at the bottom or adding an eyeshadow, I feel like I look more youthful. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now this is one of these eye looks that requires a lash or long lashes. If you have long lashes, add mascara after this process. But for me, I usually add false lashes and it looks so much better. I feel like without it, it just looks like, what are you doing? The look is not finished if you don't have really long lashes or really long natural lashes or add false lashes. All right, so I'm gonna try to blend this out a little bit more blend those two colors together and then now i'm gonna add some liner my those who liquid liner has been the milani stay put matte eyeliner this is what it looks like this is the liner i typically used in the past i used to always go for the wet and wild h2o so this is the one i used to use all the time in the past i kind of want to try that one out again today I feel like this black is much darker. Now it does say that it's waterproof, but I feel like it's not because my eyes used to kind of sweat or like get wet 
over time. I don't know if I was starting to get runny eyes. And I feel like it would just smear all the time. And I didn't like that. I feel like my eyes have done much better. Why did I get dark brown? I did not order dark brown. I'm going to have to return this. This is a different one, though. This is the Mega Liner. I'm going to try that one. This is actually in the color black. But the H2O, that's the one I used to get in the past. But I always wore it in color black. For some reason, Amazon sent me the wrong color. So we're going to see how this one works out today. Because I use a really dark eyelid color, I want to make sure you can actually see that I put on eyeliner. And I feel like when I apply the Milani, you can't really tell. Because that, that color really matches the color of this eyeshadow. And I don't really like that. So I'm trying to find a darker color. I'm hoping this Mega Liner from Wet n Wild will do the trick. I hope it's in focus. I like to do a slight wing, which can be quite challenging when you're also trying to show somebody else how to do it. I think I'll mess this side up a little bit. Not too bad, but it's not how I usually do it. They're not even even. Sometimes it does what it's supposed to do, and others it does this. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but we're gonna add the lashes. Actually, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, I am. I'm gonna add the lashes. All right, for lashes, I like to use these Coco lashes in style Venus. Okay, so this is what they look like. These are my Holy Grail lashes. I tried these once, and I haven't tried any other lashes because these. They're just too good. And these I've actually discovered are now on Amazon. This is the lash glue that I use. It's the Duo Lash Glue. It has a clear color as well as a black. I usually use the black side and I love this glue because it actually dries really fast. I used to have to wait like 10 minutes before applying my lashes because the lash glue would take forever. I'm just applying it to the lash band I'm going to apply it to both and then proceed to apply them to my lashes. Knowing which lash is the left, which one is the right, <laughs> that's usually a challenge. It probably doesn't matter, but I feel like one is meant for the left and the other for the right. It took me forever to learn how to apply lashes. I'm still not perfect at it, but I've definitely come a long way. Once you have the lash band where you want it, you just want to use your tweezers to grip your lashes and the false lashes together. That side's good. Now let's do the other side. I can't believe I did that so well on camera. It generally takes me so many tries. Now that we've done that part, I need to add some glow to the inner tear ducts. I'm gonna use this little tiny brush to do it. I'm gonna use the Tarte Champagne Glow. Nice little pop. Makes you come alive. All right, now that the face is done, I need to do my lips. Now, typically I use this really fat Jordana eyeshadow pencil in color Tenacious Brown. I can't get my hands on mine. I don't know where it is, but I'm actually glad that I can't locate it because I want to show you all a different color because that one, I feel like it's sold out everywhere. Many of you guys have told me that after watching my videos, y'all went and got that so fast that it's no longer available. So I just got in this new color by Morphe. It's called, where's the color? Trendsetter. This is a beautiful brown and it actually glides on really nicely i had one that was open up here oh, here it is so this is what it looks like it's a traditional lip pencil and this color is very beautiful it glides on very nicely just as the other one that i showed you guys and it's actually in stock so that's a plus really nice deep brown I love a good chocolate brown lip pencil. This one is perfect. I 
like I need to sharpen this pencil a little more. So now that I've lined my lips, I'm going to go in with NYX Butter Lip Gloss in color Tiramisu and also Vanilla Cream Pie. These are my go-to colors. I usually start with Tiramisu first. These are lip colors that I repeat all the time. So if you ever want to know what's on my lips, there's a good chance it's these two. You could absolutely wear tiramisu by itself. But I've really been loving a chocolate brown and pink combination. I don't know why my eyes are watering. So now I'm going to apply vanilla cream pie, which is a really pretty pink. If I'm looking down, I have a mirror in front of me, that's why. Look, isn't that so pretty? All right, now I'm going to clean up around my lips using the angled brush. I need to clean this off because earlier I had some black on it and that got on my eyes. So I'm going to add some foundation to the brush. I'm going to clean that up. My natural soft glam look i hope you all enjoyed this makeup tutorial be sure to like comment and subscribe also share it with a friend let me know if you all want to see more makeup tutorials and what other videos would you all like to see i love you guys i'll be sure to link everything down in the description box and i will see you all in my next tutorial bye guys Girl.